Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to use the optimize and decimate features in order to optimize our character specifications and file size to different levels as needed. You can see the file sizes and complexity of different types of available character exports here, ranging from a heavier CC3 Plus based character to an LOD level 2 character. Generally, the further away your character is from the camera, the less detail you need in geometry and material. These are the recommended settings based on the distance your character will be from the camera, ranging from 2.8 meters to 42 meters. Okay, let's start with the CC3 Plus standard character, which is the most detailed version that can be equipped with nearly unlimited options for outfits and accessories. This character uses the digital human shader and 4K texture maps, while the UV is split according to individual parts of the body, including head, torso, arms, legs, etc. In the Bone Manager, we can see all 101 bones included with the CC3 Plus base skeleton. In addition, CC3 Plus characters also contain a full facial expression system for the most detailed facial animation. You can test out the facial muscles in groups or individually, along with expression templates and morph sliders in different tabs of the Edit Facial tool. In wireframe mode, you can see that the character has a quad mesh, which provides more detailed and flexible performance when animating. In the preferences, you can toggle the basic information for your character, which will show up in the upper left of your viewport. We can save the character in the content manager, and when I use the find file to view the properties, we can see that the file size is 249 megabytes. This is fine for detailed scenes with close-ups of only a few characters, but if we want to include this character in a large crowd, we definitely need to optimize this size for better performance. Let's look at the various settings we have available to do that. If we click on the Optimize and Decimate button in the Attributes tab, we'll be presented with some LOD presets. The Actor Build preset will optimize the mesh to around 17,000, while LOD Level 1 will take it to 7000 and LOD 2 will go even lighter to 800 polys. Let's take a look at the actor build specs first, which are the default model specification for actor core characters. These characters have a simpler body and facial setup and are designed for higher quality crowd animations. There are a ton of examples you can check out on the actor core page. Here I'm going to use the Optimize and Decimate feature to convert our CC3 Plus character to the actor build specification. Once conversion is finished, you'll see that the character is now classified as an actor build type in the attributes. The character structure in the scene manager has also changed, as the character's eyebrows and hair have been converted to accessories, and the clothing has been converted to body mesh type. The body mesh and materials have also been converted to game-based specs. Actor build characters will retain the standard 101 body bones in order to accommodate animation in other 3D platforms such as Omniverse and Unreal Engine. Actor build characters will also retain a full facial expression system. You can see a quick comparison of the two standards here. Note that only the character's body mesh itself will be optimized with actor build, while the character's clothing and accessories will remain the same. If you're not familiar with the character creator game based specifications, please visit the Reillusion website to learn more about this game optimized standard. If we want to further optimize this character, we can manually reduce the outfit resolution by using the polygon reduction tool, remove unwanted or hidden meshes, and also merge our textures into a single mesh material. We will have more detailed tutorials in the future about actor build creation specifically. Once we go through those steps, you can see that our resulting character size is only 16.4 megabytes, which is great for a lightweight character that still retains a facial expression system. Okay, now let's look at LOD1, which can be used for larger crowds. This will convert our character to a 7K mesh with 1K texture resolution and only 54 bones. Upon conversion, you'll see that our character type is now defined as humanoid, and in the scene manager, the character's clothing and accessories have been converted to a triangular poly mesh. All the materials have also been merged into a single 1024 resolution PBR material, and only basic human IK and finger bones remain. 
Face bones, shared bones, and wrist bones will all be removed, meaning that there is no facial expression system. Okay, let's look at the LOD level 2, which is the lightest template in CC4 with an 800 poly mesh, 512K resolution, and only 22 bones. Since this character only contains basic human IK bones, upon conversion, an option will pop up to prompt you to bake the hand gesture. You can also import custom gestures here if you like. Upon conversion, you can see that we have a very simplified mesh for our model, along with a simple 512x512 512 512 material resolution and only 22 bones. The size for this LOD2 character model is only 1.41 megabytes, which is very manageable. Again, we recommend that you base your model conversion settings on the requirements of the character in your scene and distance from the camera. Okay, finally let's look at a couple of the custom settings you can use. There are four main sections if you choose the custom option, including skeleton, mesh, texture, and facial. In this particular scenario, I want to ensure that the character's index finger is placed correctly on the trigger. First, I'll place it in the way I want using the Edit Pose tool. And then in the skeleton section of the custom option, I'll uncheck all the fingers except for the index finger. And then in the mesh section, use the current option. This will ensure that even when I use the edit pose tool to move all of the fingers, that only the trigger finger will move as the bones in the other fingers have now been removed. You may want to use an option like this for a character that is meant to be consistently holding an object like a sword, bicycle handle, or anything else. The way that you optimize your character depends on your individual scenario, so hopefully this tutorial helped you out with the basics of the different optimization settings. We'll have other tutorials that delve into other related topics, so be sure to check back on our YouTube channel regularly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.